Hi YouTubers, today I'm coming to you with a book review from inside my car. I'm out today and I was like, I need to catch up on my videos. I had a few more video ideas on. Um, at college I was an English major, so you know, that meant I was kind of a nerd. You know, like to read and write and do papers all the time. And you know, come with that, reading a lot of books, a lot of stories. Um, I don't, I still, I naturally like to read. My mom, she read to me when she was pregnant with me, so I came out a good reader and writer and speller and <coughs> was always in spelling bees and all that kind of stuff. And I write poetry from time to time. But, um, I'm not in school right now, but, you know, I still like to read, you know, just for pleasure. You know, one, um, book I read was, um, by Terry McMillan. This is a book. I mean, this is a book review on Disappearing Acts by Terry McMillan. Disappearing Acts. And I got this from my local library for to use these cars driving by and stuff. Um, I just wrote a summary of the book down. So This book was written first off in, I think it said, 1989. I was only three years old. Jeez. 1989. Now, the story itself, it has two main characters, Zora and Franklin. And Zora is a music teacher and an aspiring singer slash songwriter. A little background, Zora. She has a college degree. She works at a high school as a music teacher. She And she's doing well for herself, pretty much. And when the story starts, she's um, apartment hunting. And Franklin, a um, little bit about Franklin... Frank Lynn, excuse me, he dropped out of high school but got his GED later on. He works construction currently in the story, but he wants to go back to school to start his own business. So he wants to take up business classes. And like I said, their paths cross when Zora is inquiring about an apartment. And one apartment she looked at, um, Franklin was one of the workers putting down the new floors in the apartment. And she was getting an apartment that was supposed to have all the works. New floor, balcony, da-da-da-da-da, boom-bam. And she said she, it was also closer to the subway or something, she said in the story. Um, so he, when she got the apartment, and he, uh, Franklin helped her move in her furniture. And that's when their relationship took off. They were, you know, attracted to each other. And they started hanging out every day. In the beginning of the book, they start hanging out every day. And Franklin was there so much as Zora's that he left his little rundown apartment. Well, he called it rundown. I didn't say that. He said that. He left his rundown apartment and literally moved in with her. And he, I guess, paid off his little lease thing or whatever. And he moved in with her. Um, Zora is single. Like, when they met, Zora was single. Zora is single. But Franklin, on the other hand, He's still married. He's been separated from his wife for the last six years. They have two. They have two sons together. He says that his Jamaican wife that he fell in love with is now, as he puts it, fat, lazy, and money hungry. So he hasn't had the money to get the divorce yet. Every time he gets paid from his, from his one of his construction jobs, which for him is seasonal, he either has to you know put it on rent or the kids or she asking for money so he's giving her money and he's sitting in the house eating crackers and sardines out of cans he's broke and if he do get a few dollars you know he'll go get his cigarettes and alcohol um now he wants steady employment so he can pay for his divorce um a little bit about franklin's family um he says that his mom never loved him and is always negative to everybody his father told him that she does love him, but she just has a very hard way of showing it. His dad, on the other hand, is too soft in Franklin's eyes and does whatever his mom says just to keep the peace. He doesn't stand up to her or when she argues. He just, I guess, just lets it go. His sister, he has a sister. Her name is Darlene in the story. She's suicidal. And um, Zora's parents are nothing out of ordinary but her parents. Her parents are normal. So throughout the story, Franklin struggles with job hunting and feeling like a man because he is he is basically living off his woman because there are times in the story where he works 
And there's times where he don't he don't work for like over a month. You know, whenever he needs something, he gotta ask Zora for it. And um, <clears throat> Zora is getting frustrated, but she remains supportive because she believes in him and she knows he has potential. And she even gives him money to buy a holiday gifts for his kids. So you know, Franklin just feel bad. But when he does work, when he when the construction jobs do come about, you know, he do he does send money to his wife, his wife, <laughs> and kids and. Send the rest of alcohol and cigarettes. And once, one time, Zora and Franklin, they went on vacation, and they got in an argument, and he hit her. I mean, physically <laughs> hit her. Zora's highly upset. He makes it up to her, as they say, the next day. Later on in the story, Zora gets pregnant, and Franklin does not want her, does not want another child at that time, because he's like, I already got two sons, you know. I'm getting old, I don't need them more. But Zora says she's keeping the baby. So he's agitated and he wants, he's like, oh, and you know later on in the pregnancy, you know the woman don't feel like doing it no more. So he's just thinking about his feelings on top of, well, you need to give me some, you know. Well, I'm going to go get a, go out and get it. And she's like, well, go out and get it then, you know. I don't feel like this. My ankle's full and stuff. Like, will you leave me alone? And, um, so after their baby is born, they had a boy. Um, they named the boy Jerm Jer Jeremiah. Franklin leaves to um, get his foundation back right, but comes to visit Jeremiah. He felt that they rushed into dating each other so fast, and he didn't have anything to bring to the table, even though Zora did. And he said he'd feel more complete staying with her when he got something to, you know, bring to the table, which is understandable. And they both agreed that they would rush too fast into dating. Per se, they should have just, you know, hung out a little more. Um, at the close to the end of the story, Darlene tries to commit tries to commit suicide, and after Franklin's father finally leaves his mother, yes, he got some balls and left her. He lets Darlene move in with him so he can watch her. So Franklin comes around one last time to see Zora. Zora is now writing songs. Got a new job, new teaching job in Toledo, where she's originally from. And is going back to sing with the church choir. Uh, Franklin has gotten his divorce. He is going to work construction until he gets his degree. So he he went back to construction even though it was tiring him up. And he's in school in business classes. So, um, you know, Franklin doesn't want her to move. But she told him she's going to do it. So he decides to tell her about the divorce later. So at the end of the story, you know, they end up playing Scrabble like old times. You know, they want to make love, but he said he can let let it that way. You know, they got all the time in the world. So that was basically the end of the story. So I'm assuming that um my I, my guess is that Franklin will join them in Toledo when he finished getting himself together. Because she says she's not going to really wait on him, but she's letting him know that she's going to move. And, you know, when he get himself together, he can come see them. So I'm assuming Frank was going to get it together and move up there with her and they could be one big old happy family. So it's a good book. So you go to your local library or wherever and check it out. And I think this book just reminds people to don't rush. You know, take things slowly. So that's the book review on Terry McMillan, Disappearing Acts. Very good book. It's hard to put it down. Rate, comment, subscribe, whatever you feel. Talk to you guys later.